Woo! Welcome to Switch It Up. And today is a Switch It Up big day. I'm kind of excited about this one. Yes. Go ahead. Well, it, we go back to we don't know what you don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And we were on a little hike and we met some people and they said, have you ever looked at New Horizon? And I said, I've never heard of them. We drive by I-70. We're in Junction City. Let, let's just back it up just for a second. Sheila, after living this world for three months. Not long, but three months. She says, man, it wouldn't it be great if we could just design our own? <laughs> Well, that does come a little bit into a little bit of our background. Yes. We do enjoy that part of our our past. Yes. So yes, it would be nice if we could just change this, From move complete that. complete scratch, just design our own. Yep. yep. Well, we, we found them. Yes. We found New Horizon. And I'm excited to take a look. This is going to be an interesting journey. This is not a journey for people that are gonna jump into the RV world on their first rig. This is a journey for you that have been out here for a while and you want to design something from complete scratch. That's where we're at. Yeah. I don't know what we're expecting, but that's where we're at. <laughs> so let's jump in. Kind of like our other series, we really have no idea. We have no ground rules. And hopefully we come out of this with some good stuff. So roll the intro and enjoy the journey because I'm sure Sheila will be smiling a lot and then poking me under the table. We can go switch it up. Let's switch, switch it up. up. <laughs> Let's switch it up. <laughs> We've only been doing this three months, so we're already talking. That's crazy. All right, roll the intro. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. And they didn't know where they would go, but it's got to be better than staying home. All right, it's a pretty exciting day. She was excited, she's yes. smiling. We are excited. here with Austin. Hey guys, how's it going? With New Horizons. Now, it's the old thing is you don't know what you don't know. And we're pretty excited oh. about this because Sheila was sitting there thinking about doing, what if we did something custom? Sheila, kind of explain. Well, like I said, we don't know what you don't know when you get started and you realize as you're sitting in there and you're doing different things like, oh gosh, it would be nice to be able, could we do this? Well, I'd like to be able to do that. And I didn't know that it was an option until we found New Horizons. So. And we found them on one of our trips. Yeah. And that was due to one of the viewers, or not, he was not even a subscriber. We just were talking to him. We were just talking. We yeah. ran into somebody, we were just talking on the road, and they happened to have a new horizon, and so here we are. Here we are. So we are into the creme, to the creme de la creme of custom. Yes. Right? Yeah, building With them the, individually for each customer and to fit their needs and nobody else's. We're in their shop, and actually, where are we at? We're in Junction City? Kansas. Kansas! <laughs> Everyone <laughs> goes to Elkhart. <laughs> We drove by on I-70 a hundred times and we've never even thought of this place. So I'm kind of excited about this. He's going to show us the custom of custom when it comes to building your favorite fifth wheel. Is that what we're going to do today? We're going to do it. Start to finish. Are you sure? 100%. All right. <laughs> All right, let's this do it. Is, there's a lot of ways to do this. I have customers that walk in and have absolutely no clue what they want. And that's absolutely fine because that's why we're here to guide you kind of through the process. But then I also have customers who come in and they know exactly what they want. And she, you know, there are some oh. things that if we can't do them, we've got to talk about doing other ways. Right. But she came in and she said, this is what I'd like. And she even gave some options. So, hey, if we can't do this, bathroom can say it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. We can we can look, here's what else I might be interested in. And then she's always willing to take suggestions. So yeah. we went off of this, and this is great. We'll do a top-down drawing, a dimensional drawing, send it to you, and you can go, okay. So say this came to you and you're like, mm, I don't think I like this half bath type area we need to change it a little bit but here's what i would do well then we make some changes on you know everything's subject to change and it's more than likely you're building something that nobody else has really built so elevations once we once we get past the dimensional stage do let you see it kind of from the side oh, it kind yeah. of lets you see oh 
So that's what my vanity's gonna look like. Those are the kind of cabinets I'm gonna get. This is what my storage and spacing is gonna look like. And you'll see it from every angle. So you'll see it from the side cut out and then the street side. So you can see what's going on everywhere. So, unfortunately, there's nothing built in here right now. Um, so this is, this is our frame jig. So where the whole process starts is up front and with engineering. So obviously we, we've got to design everything first. So once we get what we're actually trying to build on paper, we design the frame specifically for that unit. So even a 48 foot from another 48 foot will still be slightly different on the frame because it's built for what you're specifically doing, how many slides and all that right. jazz. So this is our frame jig. So what they'll do is they'll get raw steel in and they'll still, they're still start building the base of the frame upside down on this frame jig. Um, they'll get everything built to spec, they'll put axles on top, and then they'll flip it over and they'll do the rest of everything right here where I'm standing. Here's the cool part. We did not know this. He educated us on a lot of... Hey, somebody's got a phone call. But what we've learned is, is that a lot of times people will say that they're custom, but they will use standard frames, right? So, so yeah, so a lot of people, they, they have a frame built to their specifications. Right. So they do not build the frame in-house, but they will get a frame built to their specifications. So they'll tell them where they want to put gussets or anything, right. any kind of extra framing, and then they'll get that frame brought to them and then they'll build off of that frame. So this is built like custom, like right here in-house, yep. here to what she has in her head, basically. If to you the want. boss's specifications. <laughs> We, we spend a lot of time on in what's in your head. It's my turn. Yeah, yeah. So this is something that we've been thinking about, and you, you don't know what you don't know, so you have to start the process. But just to know that the frame is built to whatever you're going to design is, is an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, we have no, not I, seen this in any other place. Well, I don't think it exists, does it? I, I don't know. Does it's it? It's extremely, I, I'm not sure if anyone else is building their frame in-house. I know everybody's doing specifications based on models, but when right. you do something custom, even the same length is not the same as another length. So right. somebody doing anything weight distribution wise, like we were talking about a front kitchen versus a rear kitchen, well your weight distribution is different. Right. So that frame needs to be built to accommodate that and then axle placement also needs to accommodate where your weight is. Because you don't want to just throw axles in the middle of the unit and hope that your pin weight is right. a certain percentage. So, so it's based off of that where we place everything. Everything is custom starting from the very beginning. That's pretty this cool. is pretty cool. Yeah. Painted, it'll look like this right here. So, the main frame will get done on that jig upside down, then they'll get the axles on, and then once they flip it is where they start doing all of the slide rams and other things that get, you know, all of your slide assembly and everything that gets put on in the weld shop. Then it'll go back and it'll get painted. Once it gets painted, it'll go back into the weld shop, and then they'll do their whole underbellying process in there where it's nice and easy, and then it moves down here where we start putting in the wire harness, all of your LP and your plumbing and things like that, and doing the whole underbelly as far as all your heat barriers and stuff. So this is, this is where the magic starts happening. This is what we would consider the line. So once it gets on the line, it's already, a, the frame is good to go, and then we're just building on top of it. So we keep our fresh water tanks, try to be central in the middle of axle placement as we can. That's a big weight thing, is to keep a lot of your weight over the axles. So if we can keep our tanks fresh, gray and black, very centrally located over the axles, you're not getting all that space, number one, taken up in the basement area, and all the weight is not getting hung over your pin as well. You're keeping a lot of it centralized. Okay. Another thing we do is we keep all of our generators in the back of the unit, so they'll have their own carrier down here, and it's actually does a couple of things. So noise vibration is a huge part on generators, and when you put one of those up underneath your bedroom and you run it at night inside of a container, it's gonna make some noise and it's gonna make some vibration. What help if it's all the way at the back of the unit and it's actually not even sealed, it's out on the back of the unit. So you're getting, noise is getting able to travel off of the unit instead of just inside of all your compartments. Also makes it very easy to service when you don't have any walls kind of caving it in. You can service it from underneath. And then weight helps take off of the pin. So since it's behind the axles, you're actually countering some pin weight as well. So again, this is more of like a custom scenario played out because depending on how you're setting everything up, might depend on how big your tanks are gonna be, might depend on the size of your generator, if you're gonna use solar, not, not yep. as much solar. It's all, it's all custom. customed out. So. How many axles you need, because these units are gonna actually be heavier. As far as the axles go, a normal axle is what, 7,000 pounds? So it all we go based on weight and based on length. 
Right. So we have standards. On, on a Summit, we use that twin eye leaf spring by Dexter. Right. On our Majestic, the standard is that Moride independent suspension. Okay. As far as its axle rating, whether it's a 7, 8, or 9K, is based off of the unit weight we project, and okay. then also the length, option to do so. Oh, this is good stuff. So There's levels. Once they start getting all levels. the tanks in, they'll start doing some of the pre-plumbing and stuff before the floor goes on. Uh, they'll get, you'll eventually get the radiant heat barrier and then they'll actually do batten insulation. And then this whole area is actually heated by each furnace. So if you do a 42 foot unit that has two furnaces standard, each one of those will have a duct that comes into this basement area that will heat this area. So as long as you're living in the unit, all of your plumbing is guaranteed down to negative 10 degrees without any kind of Arctic package, heat package. I think that's one of your claim to fame, isn't it? I think I saw that. That's one of your claim to fame. Negative 10 degrees is negative your- 10 degrees. And yep. in writing. In, in, writing. Writing. in writing. So as long as you're living in it and running your furnaces, your tanks are going to be nice and toasty just like you will be. So, And then we do offer a tank heat package as well, but it's not necessary to have that negative 10 degree thing. Yeah, because right now we're running tank heaters at night sometimes. Yep. So, so once they get everything kind of pre-wired underneath, um, they start doing all their plumbing, all the important things that have to happen before you throw a floor on. Because as soon as you put a floor on, well, it's a lot harder to work underneath. So they do everything they can before they get a floor on. And then what they'll do is they build all the floors offline over in the lamination area, which we'll go back to next. They're all hoisted over here, and then they'll set, they're set down on here. So you'll get your basement floor, which is fully insulated and built in its own. And I'll show you back there, upstairs and downstairs floors and any other parts and pieces that go down like that. So if they're doing hardwood flooring, they'll put all the hardwood flooring on here. Um, they'll also do all the lamp, the luxury vinyl plank tile. They do all that right here when it comes in, unless we're having a, you know, unless we're like, um, it's not a perfect world. If you jump into a cabinet and try to find a wire, you, you might, you know, scratch your head when all the wires are the same color or there's no right. noting. Well, we can at least color code some things and then we also put some labeling on. So that way when you go into something, there's a chance you might be able to kind of help yourself and find what you're looking for versus just scratching your head and wondering why there's a bunch of black and white wires. Okay. Your biggest part is, is once you throw, load the truck on, all that pin weight goes to the last fulcrum it can. And if this is your last fulcrum, and let's say you can't do a lot of bracing here because of door space, you're trying to keep you know your space underneath, this is where all that stress is going to go. And this is your only thing keeping all that weight between the axles and the pin. So we carry that all the way back to the, where the upper floor almost ends, depending, and it all depends on the size of the unit and which upper deck we're going with. But then we can also brace it extra back here, and it doesn't take up your basement space area. So we go over the top of it to keep all your structure, and then all that weight is distributed between all your points right. that are hitting all over the area, not just one angle. Also, really kind of a, what we kind of pride ourselves in a big talking point is a lot of people when they do um, walls, floors, and roofs, they're doing a structure and when it comes to insulation, they're usually doing a batten insulation, kind of like what we use in the underbelly, because it's just in that underbelly area. We do what's called a closed cell solid, closed cell foam, so it's a solid structural piece and it's also an insulation piece in its own. So when this is built, you don't just have a bunch of empty gaps in between all your studs, you actually have a solid structure all the way through. So the, the foam is not necessarily meant to be something that helps the structure, it just happens to also do that. You have no gaps, it's a, it's a whole airtight space. So a lot of, like we've done some tours in some other places, a lot of them are actually having this stuff done outsourced and then they bring them in. You're doing it all in-house. Yeah, everything's done in-house. So we get the foam in here, it's our aluminum we get in that we weld over in the aluminum shop. The frames come over, they get stuck in with all their insulation, right. and then they run through our pinch roll lamination technique instead of doing any vacuum bagging or hanging walls or anything like that. So True custom. This is the basis this is crazy. of the glue is right here, so they'll do a hot glue lamination, and then we have a couple ton press that they'll run everything through. So right here is like a roof getting done. So what they'll do is they'll physically take all of this closed cell foam, and they'll take it, and they'll cut it to fit in each individual area. So instead of just having all this empty cavity where sound and, you know, empty cavities are, are a bad thing when it comes to insulation. So they'll be completely solidly filled. They'll route it out for all of its wire channels. They'll route it out for its ducting. So everything is, if it's, it, there's no empty space, we're not needed. If, if something has to run through, it's been open for just that to run through. So you have a nice solid roof, which also helps with noise. You know, if you've got a giant empty roof, anything that hits the roof, it transfers that noise yeah. through. We've got a solid roof that helps not transfer so some all, of that. All of your aluminum. roofs are aluminum. Yeah, so floors, 
Slide floors, slide walls, slide roofs, and then roofs, side walls, and floors are all aluminum. Crazy. And they're all welded. They'll come back through, they'll do the other side, and they'll run it through that press. So by the time this wall gets done, it's a structure all on its own. So like I've seen in some of the other designs that the roofs are actually a truss system made out of wood. Correct. And I've seen some roofs that are actually, are all your roofs face flat? They are flat on top because, of the radius on the edge, yes. Okay, because I've seen on one of the other units that was a higher end, they use aluminum, but they use a, also a barrel as well. They do like a, yes, like a curved system. So basically what you're doing is, is by using a flat roof, if I'm not mistaken, you're actually filling that void that you completely. would normally happen completely. So when you step on the roof, besides the fact that you know you're stepping on something solid, right. there's no empty space under there. That's a it's, huge it's difference. Like right now, when we walk, you can feel everything moving. You're not going to feel that in your no, roof. No, absolutely not. You can walk anywhere on that roof, and it's going to feel just like all the rest but, of it. Although you're paying for this. This is quality that you're paying for, absolutely. right? So there's a difference. There is a difference there. Is there. A difference. It's not a mass and mass line of It's not as easy, through. and it's more time consuming to do. So if you were building a a lot of units yeah. a day it would be very hard they're to only do doing process. approximately you're doing what 30 to 35 units a year approximately 25 to 30 a year a year so this is the reason why you're getting this next level of Absolutely. detail so once they start getting all of the walls built offline it'll move down to this station which is right before shelling and at that point is where they bring all these walls over so kind of like i said that pinch roll lamination technique so this right here is the fiberglass piece. This is your exterior wall. Mm -hmm. It's already on the wall. It's a, this is a, its own structure already. Okay. So this isn't like we're bringing over a frame, we screw it in, put a bunch of glue on it, and then we just throw a piece of fiberglass and screw it on and push against it. This has been run through that ton press back and forth a couple times, and this is completely glued. And another thing that that foam does is any kind of glue that uh, you might only have on, let's say you only run it on your, on your trusses. Well, what about all that space in between? you're missing out on the ability to have more space for glue to actually contact something. So doing that solid foam, there is glue all the way across this, not just on your frame point. So if I was to cut out this window, I would have one hell of a hard time trying to rip this board off of that foam. And it's just on the foam. There's no aluminum that's in the middle of it. Right. Because it's actually helping with structure in that purpose as well. It'll set on all of their Set points, points they've got, mm -hmm. so then they'll go from underneath and on the side. So they'll screw this whole wall in to get it underneath and then from the side, and then they'll get the roof, the back walls on, and you'll have you'll start getting what looks like a unit with your whole skirting structure. Skirting is a big thing. You'll see all the skirting out on units, yeah. and you'll go over and you kind of hit it, and it's all floppy. Yeah, that's and, us. And it's, you know, I, well, this is your actual wall, but then you also we have a whole other structure that we build that is the bottom side of the wall that comes all the way down. So just like this, you'll have another piece that goes all the way from here to your back area. And that means you get a solid uh, solid piece here. And yeah. you might say, well, that's only for you know the, the basement structure. Well, true. So once you get past where all your storage and your basement structure is, right. we're still doing full aluminum bracing if you want to look at the full side of the slide. Oh, yes. That's not like the... That's not like what we have currently. So you're never going to have any, any that piece kind of, of aluminum. flopping or flexing or anything because it's solid. It's built to be solid. So that's not really for you know anything that helps you live better. It's just another thing that you don't want a unit that really looks like crud. Well, and I like how that because that just wraps down. Yeah, the nice radius on the bottom. The nice bottom there versus that piece that just kind of. So what you do it's a, this is a slam latch on this side, and on the inside there's a cable. You just yank out on your hand. And that gives you that large area to be able to go into. And then whatever is in the basement is completely just based off of what feature you choose. So he's got a, a water filtration type system, a water softener system down here. Um, but if you didn't have that, it would just be more storage. And then he's also going to have a filter system over on this side. So he's doing lithium batteries up here in the basement. So we do a battery rack to keep it in the heated basement. Oh, look at that. So that way you are losing some storage in that way, but you are also gaining the ability to have those lithium batteries in a heated element area. Look at how those are stored up in there, Todd. You're missing it. <laughs> He's getting all of it. <laughs> so normally if we don't do lithium batteries, they're in a they're in a compartment underneath. But since lithium batteries need to be they, out of the elements and yeah, needed, they do they're need up to stay in the warm. basement area. But we try to get you storage by putting them up out of the way so you can have your storage underneath. It's still gonna take some space, but it takes a lot less space. Especially because our generator is not that much. This is not a 14 foot upper deck, so this is not our biggest, the biggest basement you can have, but you can see that this is still an extremely large basement. Todd could live in there if necessary. Hey, yeah. 
oh, the doghouse just got a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, the, I think the crazy part is is just seeing the opportunity of all the room when you take out the generator and you stick it towards the back. Yeah, so yeah. storage is, is everybody's fear. It's kind of like you have PTSD for no storage. So you come in thinking you need to do all these things to get more storage, but really, standard-wise, we're giving you more storage from the right. get-go so by doing things normally. I, I think I need to specify, because I don't think I did this before, they have two different types of units. They have one that you can customly make, the Majestic. So we have a Summit and a Majestic uh -huh. line. Yep. And then the Summit line, if you look on their website, they do have standard floor plans that you can do, and then you can change some things here and there within reason but then you can go I yeah say that. So the then you can go to the majestic and then when you go to the majestic you get all the bells and whistles and you customize it completely to what you really want yep so the biggest thing would be floor plan yeah. if you want to customize floor plans down to the you know to what is specifically for you right the majestic line would be a better fit and the summit is if you find a floor plan that we already build on the summit line right. that kind of already speaks to you and then a summit might be the better option for you yeah so it just depends and pricing is is there i mean there's a difference in pricing this is definitely for i would in my opinion this is it's for full timers this would be the this second a... third maybe fourth rig that you finally figured out exactly what you want and you want it just built and you're gonna live, and this is this, this isn't is to live in it. Oh my. Is, yeah, yeah, but they have some weekenders too. Yeah, those are 75, can, yeah. 25 percent. You, hey, you can weekend in one of these, absolutely, but that would be a really nice weekend yeah. unit. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll get all their uh, all their belt trim done and everything, and by the time it leaves this station and goes to paint, it'll look exactly like a finished unit, just gray and white. Once it gets in the shelling area, they'll start doing everything they can on the interior. Hand laid and grounded tile. Um, they'll get all their cabinets in they can. They'll start putting in some of the appliances that are important they can get in. Washers, dryers, if they can get the fridge and stuff in. Um, and they'll start doing all the work on the inside. One of the things that he did mention when we were doing the preliminary talking to him was that you can make these slides as big as you want. Within I mean, a that, reason. Well, I mean, this, <laughs> this slide is it's like... pretty much the whole side of it. It's the, 16 feet at least. That's a huge slide. And it's also very deep, so it gives you a lot of depth. So whereas our unit is only, you know, Golly. the interior space in here might only be 96 inches. When you gain all this slide room, all of a sudden you feel like yeah. you're in something that's way this, too big. This huge slide, and then you got a huge slide over here, because you're custom making it to what your living accommodation is going to be. This is amazing. It truly is amazing. Well, and I'm looking just even at the quality of the workmanship on the, I mean, that's there are craftsmanship people work putting that wood there together like it's not just what we normally see where you're just stapling box it and you just staple is it that together. leather that is our soft touch roof material <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is crazy well, i can appreciate some qu that quality that's for sure it's natural build, but... Touch walls much on all the Look at the shower. If you're a clean freak, this thing can be... This is nice. It's really nice. Dual sink they're putting in. Mm. She's a clean freak, so she would, and she would think that... Yes, that's easy, just to squeegee right down. <laughs> And then we'll do a caddy in there, and then we have also have optional foot rests and seats, so it make it easier for doing anything you have to do in a shower, whether it's shaving or anything like that. They're on break, but this is where they'll do all their cabinetry and everything back here. So we do a lot of stuff. We've got a CNC router. We do a lot of stuff CNC wise. So it's not all just um, you know all your panels and everything. Don't you don't have seen issues with like somebody cutting a crooked line or something. But then as far as the cabinets being put together and, and finished and sanded and, and all the process from start to finish, you have people actually putting it together and doing it themselves. And they're taking the QC, you know, kind of that QC job up upon their cells to, through the whole process. Okay, Austin, this is a, somebody's finished unit. They custom made this. Yep, it's not completely finished, but, but this is they're their... Towards the end, they're, they're, like, at the, they're at the, like the five yard line. This is their home. This is their home getting Okay, finished. so we're going to tour this because you got to imagine they went through this whole process to get to this point. When will they pick this up? When will it take um, delivery? I think they are going to take delivery here in less than a month. I think it's going to be three weeks or so. So let's tour this process because it's nice to see it, something that is pretty much almost done. Yep. To have a kind of an idea of what they hoped and dreamed that they would come to get finished. What do you think? Sheila's really excited. <laughs> oh, 
So they've done some customer supplied furniture um, and some, some touches of their own. This is a customer, like I said, this is their second unit now, so they know what they want yep. and they know what, you know what they want to put in certain places. Look at that kitchen. So they've got a lot of cabinet space, they've got a lot of kitchen and living space, and they've got plenty of room for people that have a lot of people over and have no issues of bumping elbows or feeling uncomfortable. I love, like... The hand laid tile, yep. Yes. Like it's like a, it's like a home. It's not like a yeah. camper. On so they've milk. got, um, just specifically this customer, and every, you know, obviously everyone's built different, so he's got a, uh, they've got like a little Breville toaster oven, so we built a cabinet for them to put their toaster <laughs> oven in. No one else might have that toaster oven, right. but he but, does, so it's so important to them. That's important. Um, they've got this water and ice in the door fridge that they wanted specifically. Um, yeah, you know, the sink, like, this is, yeah, one. yep, oh, definitely not the standard sink, but they wanted a nice um, kind of porcelain farmhouse style sink. And then they've got pop-up outlets, um, which I've got to learn how to use correctly, in each corner. So they've got USB and they have regular outlets in each corner. And then you can kind of stow it away so you don't have to worry about taking up all your space or hanging a wire or a cable down. <laughs> Do you see the possibilities? Oh, there's endless possibilities. A sucked-in unit where it's very dark. Doing the light countertops, uh -huh. this is Aurora Cream, doing a very light countertop doing a very nice gray tone backsplash, what is and this then product? this is LG High Man. So it looks like a, a quartz or a granite, right? but it holds up a lot better, and it doesn't weigh as much. So it's uh, kind of like thicker corner, it's not a solid surface. So they wanted some, they did a small fire fireplace with some But to me, I love the ability, like, one color of cabinet here and a different color of cabinet here. Like it's just painted cabinet yep. upstairs. Yep. All of our drawers are soft closed. The doors are also soft closed. But we uh, we've had a bad experience with magnetic latches back in the day. They may have gotten better now, but we use a nice solid catch latch. So you do have a soft closed door, but to yeah. latch it, you do have to push it closed. This is this is Sheila's Sheila. What is that? <laughs> Something that everybody needs. <laughs> and nobody thinks about but a little just it's a, a hamper. hamper built in right there Hot make sure that's cedar. on my, on my <laughs> list and then they have our washer and dryer over here in this yeah. stackable look todd this could be your junk drawer that could be a fabulous junk drawer everybody need every man needs a junk drawer and then we've got uh, the cedar in, closet in the air of storage we've got more storage underneath the bed as well yeah oh. kind of like the one you saw here is what a good basement storage looks like. And they're not completely finished yet, but you can see them. Oh my gosh, in. look at that water softener system. I don't think people understand. Look at this sofa. But this is a 40 footer. Look at this. So you've got a queen sleeper and enough space to sit, oh, I don't know, 10 people without getting uncomfortable. I love that fireplace. <laughs> and that's the one that they would have done in that one, but she didn't want, she wanted some yeah. storage. But that that's fireplace is absolutely cabin. a beautiful, beautiful thing. We, this is our test, since it's our show unit, we test a lot of stuff out. So we're testing out new sound bars and stuff. We're thinking about making some changes on some things. This is that lunch counter I spoke about. Yeah. So this is this is a huge thing because, number one, you fit more people. Number two, it's usable for not just eating. You know, if you got a laptop, you can sit here, you can sit outside, right. you know, and kind of do all your stuff. Edit. So it's a multi-purpose area. And then if you do chairs like this, all of a sudden, you can kind of join the living room space without having to be on the couch. So during a show, this is an amazing unit show because I can sit a family down and I can talk to everybody yep. and we're all nice and comfortable as it gets. It does heat, it does cooling. That is, it's I can't a, even hear it. It's very quiet. Um, it puts out a decent amount of air. It's not going to put out quite crazy. as much CS, CFM as like an RVAC would. I can't hear it. But it has its, its pros and that is noise and then also the fact that it does heat. A heat pump AC will do pretty good heat as well. It's made for residential. 
Here's the wind. Sheila, they got a Dyson hanging up back here. Imagine that. Okay, we finally, we got out, we had to get off the road. Yeah, it's too windy. It's like super windy. I don't, I don't know if there's anything worse than driving in wind, except the Colorado Rockies on I-70. It's the worst road. I'm, I'm off tangent, sorry. All right, so we just finished up <laughs> that amazing tour, and I wanted to just take a second to decompress a little bit with Sheila without being there, because there was a lot like yeah i'm thinking of all the footage i just shot because i haven't rewatched it yet and it's so deep on all the things that can be done talking about doing of all things Oof. it's basically the same process as building a house just as one on wheels yes i mean it's the same thing picking out floor it's everything the layout of the design. I love the fact that they'll make that frame to fit whatever it is you want to do. It is a huge, that is a huge thing. Like when you really start diving into this, again, I don't believe that New Horizon is for the person that's going to start this journey. I think that you need to be in something else to learn what you like and don't like before you go and build something unless you find one a new horizon that's used and you just jump into that one but i would agree i think you need to kind of have figured out the nuances of how you're gonna um camp or use your rv and mm -hmm. where what you're gonna exactly do to know what you need and what you don't need yeah and we're not there yet no so don't think don't take that tour as like we're jumping in to do that no. i know some of you thought of that about airstream we just didn't know what we don't know we're just out here to educate ourselves mm -hmm. and help probably some of you like you can custom build your entire rig uh, from ground up zero yeah absolutely and they he austin was so good they have a process they go through he said sometimes it could take a peep a person three months to a year going back and forth with designers to actually settle on the exact design that you want. Because they have in-house engineers that ah. can determine the weight for the axle weight, the pin weight, all of that, and figure all of that out, which is phenomenal. But it, then it just means you have this complete blank slate that you can work with. The thing for us would be we first need to decide if we're going to keep doing this. Yes. We don't even know that. I mean, a year from now, we just, we've only been doing this three months. Right. We're in the grand design. We like, we like our grand design. Absolutely. Then we showed you the Valor, which from Alliance is really they, amazing. They have some great features uh -huh. on that. And then we saw some Airstreams, which opens up a different animal. And then we're here thinking, we didn't even know. We drive I-70 all the time. Didn't even know that they even existed. I'm yeah. sure a lot of people don't because most everyone goes to Elkhart to go look at whatever they're doing. Well, and if they're only doing let's just say roughly 30 a year yes i mean there's just not a lot of them out out on the road mm -hmm. so it was just i found it very educational i felt it very eye-opening it gives you lots of options wide open door we never told them anything about prices the the custom price to to our best knowledge you can go starting around 220s and you would completely max out everything he said probably around 315s but you can do anything you want to that's that. in the complete custom uh, line in yeah. the in the majestic line and the, then the other, other one, line they've already got some floor plans and then you're just doing some modifications on that and they're in the hundreds low not low hundreds but mid, in mid, mid hundreds. hundreds i think starting but um yeah i mean it literally is if you're we don't even know if we're ever going back to sticks and bricks like we just don't we just don't we don't know, know. So, we switch it up you know yeah. we like to go places and do things and see things and but we just thought it would be education and information for, for ourselves us. and and if it brings somebody else some value that's great that's a bonus mm -hmm. and if you're in the midwest or somewhere close they're in junction city tucked off the road yep. and amazing small little staff family owned 
they only they're great people Ugh. and the people back there working on the line they take pride like some of yeah. them have been there the whole 20 years or 20 however, however many long they've, they've been, been there. there and they take pride in their work they and they there's a quality control guy who oversees your whole rig. So your yeah. rig isn't a number. It's your name. They're That's sending yours. you pictures as every, your rig's being built. Every week you'll get an update, a picture about what's happened with your rig. I just, I was impressed. And every rig has a name because there isn't a bunch of them sitting on a lot. That is your name. That's the name of the rig. That's who follows down the line. Yeah, it's not a mass production. Uh, no. It's just custom built. It is a custom. That, that is, we didn't even know it really existed. We kind of had that with one of the other ones we went to, but we learned that isn't even truly custom. So this is truly custom. So who knew? We didn't know. We didn't know. Maybe you know. And if you're looking and you're looking for that next level up, Man, you should really, I would pick up the phone, call Austin at New Horizons and say, hey, saw Todd and Sheila's video and switch it up. Um, what's this process? And we're talking, they're very non-pushing, yep. very educational. They just want to hear what you need mm -hmm. out of your rig or what you're wanting to do, and then they'll help you create what you're looking for for, for you. And mm -hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was a great, I was very impressed with the company, and it just brings up all the questions in my mind. The world is my oyster. Now she was going to bust out the graph paper. <laughs> She's had this dream of designing one of those herself. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. We, we might switch it up in the future, but right now we're good. But the door's open. I can see. Well, it's probably a more like a window. And then Sheila usually breaks out like the sawzall and cuts it into a door. And then we go through the door. That's how we ended up here. She searched and... I never once thought. I really, thinking back, it's crazy to think we've been on this journey. <sighs> yeah, it's only been three months, and here we're talking about never going back to sticks and bricks. <laughs> like, that. That's an actual possibility. It is a possibility. We're not ruling that out either, because yeah. we've always wanted to design and build our own house. So, we don't know. We may, we, you don't know what we're going to do. That's we the benefit. We don't even know. We don't know. Right now, we're RV world. And, then, and we are headed home, and that brings, like you just said when you, we walked in, it's like, we're going to be in one spot, spot for, for four weeks? weeks? Like, that's... Been, I, I don't even know what to do with that. I know. We, we love you, kids. We do. We do. <laughs> All right. Here's the thing. We were sitting there. I was finishing editing the video, and we never see a New Horizons just pull in. And I'm like, I'm looking out the window, and I was like, Sheila! And she's like, just just go talk to him. And this is Ben Goodwin. And Ben, actually, we didn't know it. We were there doing the tour. And what were you doing? Uh, I'm in the middle of doing my pickup. Yeah, he was doing his actual pickup. You're doing your one week, right? Yep. So they do, New Horizons does a one week. You come, you camp, you live in it, you do all the stuff. You do all the markings. And then they say when you go back, they fix everything, right? Yeah, they try to get everything fixed. And if they don't, they give you a little we owe you sh uh, sheet to get something done later. Mm, see how that works? So I think that's brilliant in itself. Because a lot of times, even picking ours up, we had a list of things. So anyway, so he, he pulls in. And I just was like, okay, I'm going to go talk to him. Because look at this rig. It is beautiful. And now that you know that it's all custom made, tell us about why you chose to go this way. What did you have prior? This isn't your first rig. Tell us a little backstory. Yeah, this is my second rig. Um, I've been full-timing for two and a half years now. Uh, I've had an RV for, I guess, four years. Right. And... Um, uh, I had, I'm coming from a Newmar Class A, and I decided I wanted to go with a fifth wheel uh, because I've recently discovered that I love boondocking, and the Class A's ride really low to the ground. It's really hard to get in and out of those sites. Uh, so I did started researching uh, fifth wheels, and, and I'm, I'm all about sort of upper scale kind of things. Yeah. I want it to be nice. I live in this. I work in it full time. You and know, you travel. I want it to be nice. And yeah. I, tra I, you know, I travel, and I, I don't want to hate traveling in it. Oh. Um, so just, you know, Google, you know, fifth wheel up, up scale type stuff and uh, new so horizons when, fifth wheel. When you went in, you started that whole process. How long did the phase go with you designing it to the build and to, was this like over a year process? How long did it take you? Yeah, no, certainly the COVID situation has certainly extended oh, yes. everything, right? With the, the, There's just lots of factory, not, not new horizons delays, but there's right. supplier delays. Okay. 
uh, like my furniture actually still like, technically isn't ready yet. So, uh, so I, I think I contacted, uh, I, I drove through uh, Kansas and did a factory tour back in August and it's uh, April now. And um, I, I told him I'm ready to go in August. We got the, most of the design done, I believe, in October. Okay. And signed the paperwork, and and so they do their they do their build meeting, uh, so that they inform the factory that this, this is, is what we're gonna do. Yeah. Right. And uh, so normally it would take them, uh, you know, four months or so to build uh, this particular unit. The right. rear kitchen unit takes a little longer. It's usually three months, but the rear kitchen unit. And you uh, saw the rear kitchen units four. on the ones we walked through, so that's yeah. the kind of the unit he has. Yeah. Crap! Look at this thing. Makes the kitchen. Oh my <laughs> gosh! You guys all want this. Blue Look star. at this. It's a Blue Star stove. Ben, you must love to cook. It helps me <laughs> love cooking. Oh my yeah. gosh! This is like. This is like every woman's dream. Like, my wife sees this video, she's gonna be like, you mean I can have that? <laughs> this is truly yeah. custom. I love, that. this is awesome. Oh, <laughs> look at that, look at this. this is a Holy machine. crap, you put that all in. <laughs> okay, now I'm done, come on. I'm, I'm gonna get envy. We don't want envy. He's got a dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. He's got a dishwasher. Yeah. So this 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 ended up taking longer with the delays. I, I what are we at now? Seven months or something like that. So which isn't atrocious, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's incredible. And so remember, every one of these is custom made to the individual, and he has got something custom. Like <laughs> this is going to be mind blowing when you see it, especially if you're an RV geeky kind of person like I am. I I am impressed. So we'll show that to you, and that's a solar setup. Mind blowing. So when you chose your design and you walked through it, this was something that was important to you. Yeah. Was boondocking, how to figure out how to really do solar. I am going to put his channel on here. He's just starting his YouTube channel. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so, and the reason I say that, when you see his solar setup, you're going to want to, like, okay, I want to learn what he's doing because he's making his own batteries. He's doing some crazy things. So we'll do that. But talk about the rig. You... Is there anything special that you, other than the solar situation that you did? Um, you know, I wouldn't say I did a heck of a lot special in there. There's like minor things in there, right. like, you know, Ethernet here kind of stuff and just get it so that um, it's a comfortable working environment for me. I didn't want to dedicate a whole space to my office and just right. kind of waste that space during the rest of the day. Right. But I didn't want to visually see my office. So he chose done. the rear kitchen, but he yeah. also put that where that table is that goes here he yeah. put in a workstation yeah the lunch bar has a little televator that comes up for my computer monitor and when I'm done for the day my office hides and and now then, I've got full space do you have the washer and dryer in the back yeah okay see so he yeah. he has all that too and yeah. we walked through one of those types of units you just made the modifications to what you yeah. really needed yeah got a I got I decided uh, I wanted a better range and stove than they normally provide so I went with a nice commercial brand you know little things like that the little it details makes a difference, you know? so let's talk about those little details Ben let's let's show them his caveat he's finishing it now granted he's only had this thing here 24 hours <laughs> if that <laughs> So he is now continuing to hook up what he was doing. And I just, wanna, I just want you to see this. This is why you pay the money, you do something custom so you can do what he's getting ready to do. So Ben, show us your little, um, your little project. Yeah, so why don't we, I guess we'll take a walk over yes, the batteries. Yes, let's take a look at it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a ladder to show the, the solar panels, but there's solar panels up there. <laughs> we'll talk about that. So. This is a relatively unusual thing to, to see. You wouldn't think of this as a, as a battery. What you're looking at here are actually individual cells of a battery, a DIY, do-it-yourself battery, that I built. Normally a battery would have sort of a case or a compartment around that. This is what's normally inside a lithium iron phosphate, lithium iron phosphate in this particular case, battery. But you can see the sort of the guts of the battery here. This saves me space. And I really don't need to. It's in this well, walled-off compartment yeah, I mean, that this, nobody's ever going to be in. This is only maybe what? It's 11 inches down oh. at the bottom here, depth. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That is crazy. Um, but this is uh, to put it. I mean, so I'll give you two numbers. If you if you understand kilowatt hours, it's 28 kilowatt hours of, of battery. If that doesn't make sense to you, it's 22 Battleborn uh, lithium-ion batteries. <laughs> Which, you know, so 100 amp hour, 12 volt yeah. uh, 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 batteries. This is 22 of them. 
That's insane. Um, so I built this um, to, su to supply the two large Victron inverters, uh, which I guess I can show you. They're, they're, it, I haven't mounted them or installed them yet, um, to, so I can power the entire rig. And this rig comes with a uh, mini split that that's powered off of 240. So this is one of those RVs that has an unusual actual 240 volt split phase requirement. Uh, and I wanted, since I work full time and I boondock, I wanted to be comfortable. And that's part of the reason the batteries are so big, the inverters are big, solar is big, and uh, you know this will this will get me a lot of energy. Oh my gosh, yeah. it is beautiful. Yep, yep. So you actually designed and built yes. each one of those batteries. Yeah, so I, this is why I want to send him because he spent a lot of time. He tested all this out. Yeah, and so I am. This is the next thing that I kind of want to start looking into is doing more on this. But designing and building the batteries is something that nobody really talks about. So this is kind of cool. I mean, it really. Yeah, you, you know, the, I'm just now realizing as you're talking. The the, the kicker is, um, you could have bought. 22 Battleborn batteries, but that's going to be roughly 20, 20 grand, 000, right? Yeah, because they're about a thousand dollars a Battleborn yeah. battery. Yeah. This is about four thousand dollars, right? So, so this gets me incredible, you know, power for a lot cheaper, obviously. Yeah. So that's and, and he's so tested. You, you tested the system on yep. your other your yep. other rig, and you tested it somewhere else too. Charging a Tesla? Or I charge. I charge a Tesla. I, I charge. I used. I charged the Tesla from this battery bag. Oh a battery my gosh. charging a battery. Yeah. It was a great way to do a load test. Yes, yeah. it's absolutely incredible. And yeah. th this is the stuff that, like the Switch It Up channel, I like to see unique and different things. And when he rolled in, not that I don't love your Majestic and everything you've yeah. done, we did a tour through one, but this setup, this is what we're talking about custom when you're when you're coming up with what you want to do. This is incredible, Ben, it really is. It, Thank you. Uh, well, and, and New Horizons has really helped enable me to, you know, they, they built this rack for me to put these batteries okay. in. I gave them the specs, the welder just came in and Gosh. they're all super interested in this. They're like, I'll help you do this for free and just whatever. And, uh, you know, the custom design aspect of building the RV meant that I could uh, dictate to them what to do on the roof so right. I could get as much solar panel up there as possible. So, you know, that was key. Yeah. This is amazing. So, that being said, that concludes our lovely little majestic um, little tour of New Horizons. Ben, you're kind of stuck under there. <laughs> I'm, uh, I kinda, I'm a relatively short person, <laughs> but I can, I can almost. Almost. <laughs> it's all good. So, I'll put a link to his channel on this video, and I look forward to, if you guys have questions, reach out to him. I mean, happy. I am yeah. not a expert in any of this. This is unlike the beginning. We burned up our first two batteries, and then we bought four AGM. So, this is like the next level and I think it's pretty awesome just to see the creativity that you put into this and I really think this is going to be good value so I, I, I just hope you really enjoy that. Thank you so much Ben, Thank I appreciate you. it. You bet. So that's all. Now I'm going to end this video. It's a long video but it's so good. This is a good video so hopefully you got some good value and content out of this. Alright, we got to get off here because this video is probably super long but that just peeks into our minds and where we're at. So thank you for tuning in. If you're looking for that next step, reach out to New Horizons and um, tell them we yeah, sent you. Call Austin. We get nothing from it, but just tell them. Maybe yeah. if we sold like 15 or 30 of them. He or... might give us a thousand dollars off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to talking to you in the next video. And we are out. out.